Good morning, comrades. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back at the Nerva Kring, and I hope you all are doing well. Before we get started, I want to say a quick message to our regular audience, namely, after five years, we have finally launched our Apex web shop that you can find in the video description and in the first pinned comment down below. Now, to our main topic, I'm pretty sure majority of you by now have seen the horrific accident of Roman Grosjean in Formula One. And like every other motorsport enthusiast, I'd like to say that I'm very thankful, very grateful to everything and everyone who have contributed to, am I allowed to say, happy ending of the situation to a very positive outcome considering the circumstances. I'd like to wish Roman a very speedy recovery and I'm looking forward to see him back in a Formula One race car again. But until he makes his full recovery, Haas F1 team have announced or has announced uh, that he will be substituted by Pietro Fittipaldi. And whenever people talk about Pietro Fittipaldi, they quite often refer to him as, of course, Formula One test driver, but even more often as the grandson of 1972 and 1974 Formula One world champion Emerson Fittipaldi. But I would like to refer to Pietro as someone who is very charismatic and more important, someone who is very down to earth, something that I very much admire and value in people. I had the great pleasure of encountering him a number of times last year when I was following WRT race team. And I'd like to give another great shout out and great thank you to WRT for allowing me to experience these adventures and unforgettable memories. Now, one of those memories last year was actually here at the Nürburgring at DTM, where I actually made a video or so to say interview with Pietro and don't ask me why I never published until today. And I would like to underline one more time that the following interview that you're about to see was made last year. So before we had all the social distancing rules of today's society. Anyhow, enjoy the interview guys where we talk about food, about being Formula One test driver, about how to become a better track day driver. But first of all, Pietro, could you please tell us what makes driving DTM so awesome? Yeah, first it's an amazing car. I mean, it has uh, about 600 horsepower, 610. With push to pass, you get a little bit more. You have DRS as well. It's a carbon fiber uh, tub, you know, so the car is really lightweight. And uh, it's an amazing car, high downforce as well you know, and um, with this turbo engine, especially that they went in this year, because you have so much high torque, you really have to manage the tires, so it's quite difficult in the race with the tire degradation. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, there's a lot of things uh, that I had to learn, had to adapt and keep improving, and uh, it's been great to be racing DTM. Apart from your uh, experience at DTM, you're also doing tests for Formula One. Yeah, yeah, so I've been very fortunate this year, I've been really busy, you know, I, when you're, you're busy and racing, it's good, you know, so I've been racing DTM, I was a test driver this year for, for Haas and Formula One, so a lot of the work we do there is on simulators. So before every race, um, you know, I'm on the simulator doing pre-event uh, preparation with the team. And then obviously throughout the year when there's tests, the team puts me in to test the car as well. And uh, it's, been, it's been great to, to be doing this, uh, DTM and also Formula One. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people uh, say that DTM is probably Formula One with closed cockpits because of the amount of uh, aerodynamics. So you're probably the best person to ask the question, is this true? How comparable are the downforce uh, no, I think I think like um, comparing like to other touring cars, DTM is like by far the, the best one, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because it has so much technology, the cars are so quick. Um, it's the best touring car. It's a Formula One of touring cars, basically. Um, for sure, if you compare a Formula One downforce to a DTM, it's still difficult to compare. The Formula One is, uh, has a lot more downforce. It's a lot lighter. Not a lot lighter, but it is lighter. You know, has more power. So um, it's difficult to compare in those terms. But by touring car like terms, the DTM is the Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. What's the best part about driving DTM? Yeah, the best part about driving DTM first is uh, it's an extremely competitive series. Um, so I'm racing against uh, extremely competitive drivers, teams. There's the best manufacturers of the world here. You know, you got BMW, um, Audi, Austin Martin. So it's uh, it's really great to to be a part of it. And um, yeah, it's a championship with a lot of history. And if you win here, you can win anywhere. Yeah, of course. You already had quite quite some races behind you this year. What was your most memorable moment? Well, I think I've had a couple of uh, memorable moments. I mean, my first one was my first top five finish in uh, Misano. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say, you know, I qualified fourth at Assen. You know, so we've had some strong qualifying, 
qualifying performance, Lausa Turing as well. We had some double points finish, finished seventh and ninth. Um, so we've been there and I was just improving that little bit more, um, executing, making sure we execute on all areas to be fighting for podiums. That's the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's of course not only for you a big achievement, but also for WRT as a team because it's for them also their maiden season. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure there was always a big party when the, something like that was yeah, happening. Yeah, if we can get the first podium, I think the whole team will be uh, partying. <laughs> There's three races to go, so we're going to be pushing for that. Yeah, I remember uh, this winter when I went to WRT in Belgium, like in January or something, and when they announced that they're going to participate with DTM, they're like, yeah, we're just going to like look around and uh, <laughs> yeah, if we just yeah, if results are good, we're good, but now like <laughs> it's actually very, very good for the, yeah, for the first time, it's I would very say. Good. Yeah, yeah, compared yeah. like if you consider that it's the first year for the team, two rookie drivers, I think uh, the team's doing a, a great job mm -hmm. and now we got to keep pushing. Yeah, what's the mo most difficult moment you had? Uh, I think the most difficult is, um, well, I'd say here Nürburgring has been a bit difficult. Um, you know, we had a five place grid penalty, so that puts you in the back and mm -hmm. um, also, the uh, Denver Green is a difficult place to overtake, so that didn't help. We had some issues um, with the car, so it's been difficult the beginning of this weekend, but tomorrow's another day. It's, but Saturday was difficult, Sunday is another day, another qualifying, another race. So we'll reset and uh, push again tomorrow. Yeah. Well, what, uh, what kind of tip would you give to people who want to get into racing or are already racing? What's, what are the things that are being overlooked the most? Uh, I think um, you have to start in karting. Karting gives you the fundamentals, the, the principles, that's the most important. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day with racing, um, like any sport, there's limited opportunity, you know? Um, but for when you go from karting to formula cars or if you want to go into GTs or something, you're, you're going to need some, t some type of like sponsorship or funding behind. Mm -hmm to get before to before you get to a professional level because you first have to get into it get into i don't know f4 or f3 show you know the motorsport world what mm -hmm. you can do to then get a, a professional drive to make a career out of racing so that's the tough part about racing you need funding behind you to get started you know sponsorship mm -hmm. which is really tough to find so i'm grateful for the sponsors that i have um, that have been supporting me since i've, I've come to europe to race um, but yeah, that's something that's uh, key. You have to be quick, but you also have to have the side, unfortunately, uh, mm -hmm. to have the funding behind. What's the easiest way to improve or, or like uh, the most, yeah, people that overlook a uh, way to improve your driving if we don't talk about like the high level of racing, like people who just like want to drive track days, you would see. Oh, okay, so I would say um, the most important is, um, I think, braking, because a lot of people get the braking wrong. Braking mm -hmm. starts, you know, the corner, you know, it starts the corner. So whatever you do in braking is going to influence what the car does in the middle of the corner mm -hmm. in the exit. So you have to really focus on your brake points. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't, maximize the braking of the cars as much yeah. as they should so you really have to hit the brake i mean it depends on the car you're driving but most of the time you have to hit it almost as hard as you can yeah some of the cars you'll take on track days maybe has abs so use the abs maximum <laughs> maximum try to brake to what you think is the limit and if you see you hit it as hard as you can and you feel that you stopped before yeah. the corner brake later you know you got yeah. abs to, to help you not lock up the tires so you got to really um get the brake point right once you get the brake point right then the the rest of the corner comes to you yeah uh, what would you say about uh, like racing or driving dynamics literature? Because people overlook that. Do you like like reading some books about car physics? Or yeah, for sure. I mean, um, when I first started racing NASCAR, I was um, when I first started racing cars, I was racing NASCAR, and uh, my engineer at the time he gave me a, a book to read, and it was about uh, stock cars. But um, a lot of the stock cars are a lot. They're very mechanical, not a mu not much aero. So I learned a lot about um, mechanical changes on the car. You know, with springs, geometry changes. Uh, you know the, the anti-roll bars and stuff so it was a book that i that i read and as a driver i think it's very important to to understand this area because when you're in the middle of a weekend you have to make a decision and maybe your engineer is doubting something you can you can help them make that decision if you have a better understanding mm -hmm. you, you like working with engineers at wrt yeah i like working a lot with them uh, my engineer is uh his name's jonas he's from belgium the other engineer uh, jonathan's engineer is uh, jerome he's uh He's a French uh, French guy, so uh, we have a lot of French-speaking people in the team. Yeah. I'm still trying to learn how to speak French. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm trying to learn, but um, yeah, it's been great to work with the team. Yeah. What's your winner's dinner? Winner's dinner. <laughs> it's tough. Let me let me think. I'd say a winner's dinner. I would go all out to get like a 
a burger, yeah. uh, some ice cream at yeah. the end, maybe dip some french fries in the ice cream. I used to do that as a kid too. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really good. You guys should try that with some, some, uh, some Coke or some soda on the side, you know? Yeah. So I think uh, winter's dinner, you just go all out, yeah. screw the diet, just <laughs> a thousand calories in one hour. And I that's think that's it. a common issue at WRT yeah. because like uh, Dries Van Thor, he's always saying, yeah, McDonald's, that's for me. Yeah. Like they always go like, like oh, all the, I, I think it's like a cheater's day, like a reward. Yeah, Exactly. You need to it's fight the, for something. You get right? the cheat meal. That's yeah. the reward for winning the race. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, I wish man. you a lot of uh, success, of course, and uh, most importantly, fun. Yeah, at yeah. The end, because Thanks. racing is about fun. That's what they say. No, it's about winning. It's about winning. It's about guys. winning. It's about winning. <laughs> <laughs> fun comes when you win. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, again, uh, make sure to give him a follow, guys, and also WRT. Thanks.